going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturday mornings, Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. And Sundays with Andrew Zarian. And it is Monday here on the show. And we got a lot to talk about here today. Welcome to our newest affiliate, Real Talk 1540 WYOH in Youngstown, Ohio. Special thanks to operations manager Carl Bloom. It's time to talk some pro wrestling here today. And we got a lot to talk about. Yesterday was AW Revolution. And uh, what a show it was. I thought this was my favorite AEW pay-per-view I've ever seen. The matches, I mean, two of them were just out of this world. Three of them actually were out of this world. Uh, Several great matches. Only one that I didn't think was all that great. And man, that Sting retirement. Brother, I never saw anything like it. And I saw the great Muda's retirement, which had one of my favorite matches of the year, him and Chono. But uh, it was great, and we're going to talk all about it here today. And if you would like to get your thoughts in, I'm going to read some text messages, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. That's the text message line, 425-780-7566. Let us know what you thought from the show. And there is a lot of fallout from the show as well. We'll talk about Darby. We'll talk about Sting. We'll talk about where they're going with the tag team titles. Dynamite this coming week. There's so much to get into. And, of course, all of the other news as well. The tag team match we were expecting for the first night of WrestleMania, Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. It is official. I tried to tell you Roman was working two nights. No one bought it, but it's happening. And plenty more. Back in a moment to kick it off Observer Live. You know, that was a very special night for me. Um, and I've listened to Cody about it. It's not one of his, it's not his top match, he says, but man, it's mine. You know what I mean? It's uh, very special in my heart. And to do that at 50, right, is a, it's just a, it's a great achievement for somebody like me, man. It really is to be in my kind of my, st- my shape still in good shape to, be able to go out there with the young young kids and pull things off um it's it's so amazing you know when i was so nervous when we you know cody's music hit and he broke the throne with a sledgehammer and all that i'm just waiting for my my entrance right and this new upstart company aew i didn't know how the fans would respond to me uh whether they would boo me or whether they would you know cheer me or whatever so i'm so nervous and i'm so laser focused on what i'm doing but it it was like god my butterflies in my stomach were crazy my music hit and they responded in kind and i was like okay it's not so bad and i'm always like that as soon as i go through the tunnel it goes away right and then i'm laser focused on what i need to do man and it's like it was good to feel that reaction from the a new fan base that had watched me my whole career, but they're different than WWE fans to go down there. And, you know, um, I've explained this before and it's, let's see if you can understand it. I step in the ring, right. And they start chanting Dusty's name, right. Which really just, oh man, you know, chills on your, on your body. You're in the moment. You're so laser focused. And you hear that for a moment because I point to the to the sky, I point up, and they started to chant Dusty. And then all of a sudden, the sound and everybody in the arena has become blurry to me, right? I can hear them, but I can't hear them. I can see them, but I can't. I'm so focused on Cody and what we need to do right now to get it to where it is. Because for years and years, I was told, no, it wasn't good enough to be on WrestleMania or whatever. So... We had a thing to prove here and I was focused about it. And we probably could have done a couple things wrong in that match and it still wouldn't have mattered. It was so good. The story was built in one promo a piece 
they were ready for it. All the stars aligned, the magic happens, and we struck lightning. And it was really cool to do. And I think that match will go down in history as, as you know, one of the greatest matches of all time. You know, there's some great matches out there, but I think it really, it, it holds water. I think it, it's going to be talked about for 10 years from now, you know, 15, 20 years from now. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Before we get going, a couple of things real quick. A big hello and welcome to our newest affiliate, Real Talk 1540 WYOH in Youngston, Ohio. I love that place. You Special. think I'm lying to you. I'm not lying to you. It's the home of champions. It's the home of men, the home of fighters. Harry Arroyo, Kelly Pavlik. And most importantly, Ray Boom Boom Mancini, my first favorite fighter. Love Boom Boom. Special thanks to operations manager Carl Bloom. And Carl, you will learn quickly that Mike is a great liar. What are you talking about? I got a pair of Ray Mancini signed trunks that my brother got for me. That's how big. Yeah, your brother's a a big fan. Not you. what are you talking about? If I could fight somebody right now, it would be you. Let's throw hands, son. Now listen. Yes. I also want to mention that uh, on my Twitter, on my X, at Brian Alvarez, sticky to the top, is a link to the archive for all of my members-only television reports. And the full AW Revolution report is up there. Same with SmackDown and NXT this week, AW Dynamite. Got a lot of great feedback, so thank you, everybody. And if you want to read them, head up there and check those out. And now the news. I need some papers to rustle as you I get into a, the news. You need a wrestling news theme is what you Hey, need. listen, we'll talk about Sting and everything, but I think the first thing I want to talk about, because, you know, usually when I... My first question usually after a lot of these shows is not to try to get, like, any insider news or scoops or anything like that, but more, is everybody all right? <laughs> <laughs> like, if you... I mean, if you know me, that's usually, like, my first question to everybody. Is so-and-so all right? And everybody has been asking about Darby. And here's the update. Darby Allen needed... Would you like to guess, Mike, before I say it? Uh, I... I, uh, 200 stitches. I have no idea. I have no idea. I looked at this guy's back last night. It was incredible. And it was like he was wearing a red cape. (laughs) And I thought, oh, my God. Oh, my God. They're not going to let him back into the match. They did. He's still streaming blood everywhere out of his back. He needed 12 stitches. Well. No. No, well. Death by a thousand cuts. I heard that, and I was like, okay. (laughs) Hold on a second. You mean 1,200, right? (laughs) Right? (laughs) 12,000? 12 stitches. So, I don't know how. It's like thumbtacks. But thank God. (laughs) And that's the story. Well, here's, I think more. So he's on his way to Everest. Honestly, to me, yeah, really, Mount Everest. That's what he's doing to relax after a show like that. I, 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 here's my thing. Yes, he went through that pane of glass and shattered into a, a ton of pieces. So it would really, if he died, because he bled out, which they said during the show. I thought I would hear that during a GCW or a Circle Six show first, that he may bleed out here, guys. I mean, that's Tony, what Tony Schiavone said. But my thing was, it wasn't the glass as much as the ch- hitting the chair. And then hitting the floor, because if you see this from different angles that are online, he didn't, this was not a joke of a jump. 16 feet through that pane of glass, hitting the chairs in his liver on the chairs, and then the floor. That, even more than the glass, is what really got me about that. And it's insane. He's an idiot. 
but oh. he wouldn't be here's the thing he wouldn't be darby allen without it and you know what i say he's an idiot because i wouldn't do that i would think i was an idiot but the reality is that's why the darby allens carl walenda's why do you go see Cirque du Soleil? Because you see these people do these incredible stunts and these incredible feats physically that you can't do. And it's always amazing to see. And Darby Allen is amazing to watch. And whether you like him or not, you can't take your eyes off of him. Well, this was my favorite AEW pay-per-view of all time. And the only thing I haven't... You know what's funny? Is it's my favorite AEW pay-per-view of all time, and I still haven't seen the opener yet. <laughs> because BR Live sucks, but I'll well. try and deal with that later on. I could have tried to watch it yesterday, but I had other things that I had to attend to yesterday. <laughs> and a long story for another day. But anyway, uh, Christian beat Daniel Garcia. And from what I saw, like the heat was insane for this match, and it looked it, like an incredible match. It was a nice start. I but I, see that. I didn't see it. Eddie Kingston, Brian Danielson was a match where on most AW pay per views, it would have been the best match on the show. Absolutely incredible. Eddie Kingston retained the title over Danielson. But this was not every AW pay-per-view. This match was probably the second best match on the show. Some people argued the third or the fourth. But I thought it was the second best match on the show. We had the All-Star Scramble, which I don't know, man. I guess I'm in the minority. I thought this match was great. For, given who they had in it and how many different people, different styles, different sizes, I thought they pulled this off way better than it had any right to be. Hell and no. Wardlow won, and he will be getting a shot at Samoa Joe at some point. Roderick Strong beat Orange Cassidy. Match was great. Won the international title. Roderick Strong is just a machine. A machine. Yeah. And he destroyed poor Orange Cassidy and beat him clean for the title. We had BCC not only beating FTR in Greensboro, North Carolina but they beat them clean via double submission in the middle of the ring. They both were choked. Mm. And obviously, as we'll get to, the tag team titles are now vacant. So, I mean, there's only two options, okay? Unless Tony's lost his mind. Either BCC are the next tag team champions, or BCC and FTR are in the finals of this tag team tournament, and FTR beats them to win the titles. I don't think there's any other option here. We have got Timeless Tony versus Deanna. I mean, wrestling-wise, I would say it was good. Everything else about it, the fans, they do not care about Deanna. They do not want to boo toneless, Timeless Tony Storm. There was no heat for this match, and it was not in any way surprising. I could have told you this would happen. In fact, I did. I told you this would happen going in. It's the same problem we've had with every promo segment they've done, but we just keep trudging on because things take a long time here. Will Ospreay, Takeshita, probably going to end up one of the top three or four matches of the year. Absolutely incredible. Will Ospreay should, on Wednesday, be the top babyface in AEW. He should be the number one guy. He should win the title at Wembley. I don't want any arguments. I don't want this to take a year. I mean, let's do it now because he can't do this forever, but he can do it right now, and we need a top babyface. Hallelujah. Samoa Joe beat Hangman and Swerve, and I will say the good thing about this is I think they actually finally pulled the trigger on Swerve actually turning babyface. I've heard people try to tell me that he is, but he's not, and based on what they did with him and Nana... Clearly, there is a actual turn coming, and the sooner they do it, the better, because people want to cheer him, and he is a heel in a heel group, and it's time. And it was actually time a long time ago, just like with Tony Storm. And then Darby and Sting, you know, this was the big question. Is Sting going to put them over, or is he going to retire undefeated? And, like... My prediction was he was going to put him over. But in predicting that, I said it would be wrong. He needed to win this match. I had no doubt whatsoever in my mind. And he did. And it was awesome. And now that I know Darby only had 12 stitches, I mean, last night it was like, if I would only have changed one thing 
It would be Darby's glass bum. Otherwise, it was perfect. Now I found another guy had 12 stitches. Man, I wouldn't change anything. This <laughs> match about, was perfect. What about Ric Flair taking feet to the head? <laughs> he probably wished he could have gone through the glass. Well, that's... <laughs> That's a good point. The fact of the matter is, it was perfect. <laughs> and I loved it. And I have nothing but good things to say about this show. Except for that. Anyway. Back in a moment, we'll get more of Mike's thoughts and uh, and all the other news coming out of the pay-per-view. Observer Live. I think it's my sobriety that keeps me going. Um, since I got clean and sober 15 years ago, it's... It has put this kind of new shine on my life that I need to kick it into gear and continue growing and continue what I love to do, which is this wonderful business we're in and have some fun. And it's all about having fun. If you can't have fun at your job, then you don't really need to be in it. And I'm very good at what I do. So I love this business. And I just uh, each time I go out there, it is an opportunity for me to be kind of a teacher for the youngins in the back because I'm very old school with a little new school attitude. So without the old, without the old school, there is no new school, right? So it's like all these people do the, all these impressive things all the time. And then what I like to do is completely different than that. And that's to tell a story. It's very important to me because the fans kind of, they have made us right. So, Without the fans, we're nothing. And the, the fans that are uh, going through their day and they might be having a, a terrible day or whatever, and they turn on the TV on AEW just to watch us, it is my job to take them out of that day and entertain them but make them feel something. That's the most important thing is to move somebody and to make them feel something. Because if you make them feel something, they're going to come back. And so that's, that's kind of my my goal every time that I, you know, go out there, it's, um, yeah, I get a lot ner I get a lot more nervous at my age for some reason, which is really weird. Um, and I think they're good nerves, but, and I've always been nervous, but really since I've turned 50, it's, it's like every time I go out there, I'm just like, Oh my God, man, I can't mess up. I can't mess up because you know, there's people out there. They're going to be like, Oh, Dustin needs to retire. And I hate that. I don't want that. I want to kill it each time. I want to put on a banger and uh, tell a good psychological story for the fans to enjoy. I don't think I really need to prove myself anymore, but I think it's just an internal thing that I need to prove to myself, hey, I can still go out there and do this, right? But as far as proving to anybody else, I, I believe people know how good I am and, and that I can go out there and wrestle circles around some of the young ones even still today. And um, we have some incredible talent, and I'm just trying to keep up. I'm just trying to keep, in a word, young, right? And it's very difficult when you're 54, almost 55. But just to throw in a, a couple of new things by evolving your characters and changing things up every once in a while, I'm good at that, and that gives me a little more life and gives me a little longer to kind of enjoy it, right, before I need to switch it up again. And I think that's the key to my career is evolving. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And we were talking about our newest affiliate, Real Talk 1540, WYOH, Youngston, Ohio. And Craig Keating here on The X says, Congratulations, guys. We enjoy having the show on 99 KMSR 98.9 FM, 1520 AM in Mayville, North Dakota. Hopefully there will be more affiliates to come. And hey, if you want to be an affiliate, I mean, you can contact Sports Byline USA, talk to Darren, or you can message me on Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. I can put you in touch with Darren and uh, carry the show. You can carry it live. A lot of people carry it on uh, delay. Whenever you want to carry it, I don't care. To strap handles to us, we're here for you, baby. Come on. Yeah. You know, when Mike does solo shows, it's also available 
on 99 AMSR. You know, I had already cracked open the bottle. It, see, it's too late. Thank you. Yeah. Thank it's you. Whole, I'm on. here all week, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern. All right. What are your thoughts on uh, the show? Anything you want to add? It was a great show. I mean, there, there's not a whole lot to add. I mean, we could get into the picking of nits if we have time to or something like that. But I'm with you. I think this is the best event that they've put on. Most certainly for me as a viewer, it was the most fulfilling event that they've put on. They have had better shows with more five-star, four-star, match-of-the-year type deals. But this was about the event. This was about Sting and how they had him go out on top that match itself which was a complete i mean it was almost surreal it really was watching him watch his career on a big screen leading in i mean the video packages that were done leading into this show were phenomenal and they deserve all of the credit in the world for that. They matched the gravity of the event, and I thought it was fantastic from that point of view, all the aesthetics that went into that, all of that stuff. I thought it was great. Darby Allen is a madman. That is absolutely for sure. I will say this. I, at first, when they first announced the match, I was like, well, why not FTR? You're in the Carolinas. It's a tag match. This seems to be too perfect. As time went on, as it got closer, I certainly changed my mind. And then after watching it, it was galvanized that the Young Bucks were the perfect right opponents in the perfect, I don't know, I want to say the perfect characters, but they did what they did as far as it being these smarmy chumps that were trying to just destroy everything. It, they were fantastic, and them bouncing all over the place for them was phenomenal. I thought it was great. As far as the rest of the card goes, I'm happy Samoa Joe is still the AEW World Champion. I'm happy that Paige and Swerve are still going to be going at it for the reason that you mentioned. We know right now Adam Page can get booed. With Swerve, he's getting cheered nonstop. we got to figure out something between he and Nana Maybe there's not a break there exactly, but there's got to be something where his promos and all that sort of stuff, he doesn't change his style, but he adapts it more to being a baby face. Will Ospreay and Konosuke Takeshita, I could pick nits about this match, about little things here and there, but the bottom line was it was phenomenal. And an athletic, incredibly athletic contest. Is it a little bit too video gamey? Yeah, but that's 2024. That's how it goes. And if you're going what to do What an old that, man. But here's the thing. If you're going to do that, be Kenosi Takeshita and Will Ospreay, who was an absolutely amazing professional wrestler. And as you mentioned, I don't know how long this thing is going to go on between he and the Don Callis family before he finally breaks away. But I tell you what, he's going to break away. He's the biggest star that they're going to have until they screw it up and or until something happens. So I'm all for building towards him winning that title at uh at all out two or all into whatever the hell it is so you know i, I want to hear some other people's comments about it too and i don't know if you you offered it well, up. I'll, I'll get to that memories. in a moment but i got one other thing i want to say sure which yes 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 i have to bring up wwe why but this is this is constructive criticism that i'm about right. to give okay i watched this show and i watched elimination chamber okay and the thing with both shows is they actually have a fair amount in common in the sense that both were big shows, both had great crowds, and on both shows you could pick every single finish before the show started, and they literally did the right finish in every single match. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to hear that one was more predictable than the other. They were both exactly as predictable, okay? But... There is a big difference between the two shows. And that is that this one was four hours long and it flew by. Flew by. And that Elimination Chamber match was excruciatingly long. It was a number one complaint everybody had. And my constructive criticism is Vince is gone. You're no longer on a WWE network where you have to tout all these stupid stats. Just get in there and do what AEW does, 
which is you do a match, you have a 30-second video package, and you do another match, and you have a 30-second video package, and you do another match. There was a period on that Australia show between a match and another match, and granted, they had a Grayson Waller segment in between, but 45 minutes of nothing, okay? Why? And you know what's amazing about it? There was a period where WWE, the main roster, it sucked. They were just hemorrhaging fans year over year. But everybody was raving about what? NXT TakeOver. And every one of those TakeOvers was two and a half hours long. It was boom, boom, boom. Great match package great match package great match end over they did not stretch them out to four hours they did not have a and those were like four four match cards just like australia they didn't stretch it out four hours and make you sit through a bunch of nothing okay there's absolutely positively no reason Yes, that you can't do a two and a half hour pay per view or a three and a half hour pay per view and just get in and get out. Nobody's going to complain. I never saw somebody complain <laughs> that a takeover was too short. And you know what? People will complain about anything, okay? They'll complain about anything. I never heard one person say, I'm mad that that takeover was too short. <laughs> never. But you know what I hear about every WWE pay per view? Why was it so long? Why do they drag? It went on forever. So <laughs> stop doing it. Nope. Nope, not going to stop doing it. You know why this is. No, actually, I don't anymore. I knew back in the day on Peacock. Commercials? Where they go, well, you know. Dude, the commercials are like a minute long. Brian? They're not 45 I, minutes long. They are treating this as if it is a boxing pay-per-view almost. To the point where sometimes, you know, I wonder if the matches matter, but that's how they're doing this. I don't like it either, but I can guarantee you they are not going to change it because they have set this thing up where if they can add more advertisers, that's easily done now. And yeah, they are too long. I wish it wasn't the same. I wish AEW would not have a pay-per-view that goes till midnight on a Sunday night. Guess what? That's what they do. I can't do anything about that. To me, comparing WWE and AEW's pay-per-view, look, WWE is not going to change. AEW doesn't have to do this, nor does any other wrestling promotion have to do this, nor do they do this. So I accept it here because that's what this is going to be because I understand what it is. Yes, I wish they would add some more matches. I, I do, if you're going to have a show that long. And I wish they'd cut back on the breaks. But you know darn well that's not going to happen. And you know why they're opening it up. It is for more advertising. And it is for things that benefit them from a business point of view. Bro, they did this long point before point. they had advertising. They did this on the WWE Network. They just want to stretch it out forever. I can watch a four-hour WWE pay-per-view in 90 minutes. There is yeah. absolutely no way that there's two and a half hours hours of advertising it's yeah, but just if they need those sitting it, there taking those numbers and then turning them into advertising as they do with all of their nonsense numbers and at least this one unlike the youtube numbers aren't as much of a nonsense number that you can go and shop around because we had x amount of people watching for x amount of time and it's just a completely di look if you want to complain about something, brother, you want to complain about something? Oh, I complain will later. Complain about Bleacher Report. Uh, How I'll, about we complain now, about that? I'd rather be positive for a while because I'm going to really launch in about 10 minutes here about something. AW Tag Team titles are vacant. They are starting a tag team tournament. And the uh, I presume it's going to start on, on uh, Wednesday. But we really don't have anything for Wednesday except... A Will Ospreay match that may not even take place because he got his back all jacked up. But uh, they'll be doing a tournament. And Sting and Darby obviously will not be in the tournament. And I don't think Darby's going to be in the tournament. In fact, I know he's not going to be in the tournament because he's got a match with Jay White coming up in two weeks at Big Business. And then at the end of the month, he goes to climb Mount Everest. So we shall see what teams end up in this tournament. And hey, you know what? I ain't going to complain, but... Uh, end of February was a week ago. Uh, they mentioned nothing about rankings. 
So hopefully we've uh, moved on past that. Oh, doubtful. Just wait. But uh, yeah, your top eight. Don't your top totally eight dropped teams? It. Don't your top eight teams now have to be entered into this thing? I mean, I just pick eight teams, brother. <laughs> Greensboro Coliseum. Thank you, Sting. The city has proclaimed March third. Thank you, Sting Day. They provided black baseball bats to Sting, Darby, Tony Schiavone, Jim Ross, Tony Khan, and Ric Flair. Hopefully this is a annual holiday in Greensboro, North Carolina. I'll we got a it. new AEW pay-per-view. Talk about that after the break. Observer Live. Oh, it was so cool. It was, it was terrifying more than anything. Um, I almost wish I fell off right at the end and I almost wish I'd have fallen off earlier on because at least it would have been done and it would have been out of my system. But the fear of falling off of that thing is so much worse than actually falling off of it. Um, but it, it was it was so cool. Like the amount of things you can do in a match like that, if you think of all the things you can do in a match and then you add six other people and then you add this huge structure that you can all hang off of, you know, like there's just so many ways to get around it and obviously I was sharing it with some incredible women too um lots of women that I'd never even wrestled before so that was a whole thing in itself um but yeah it was crazy it was it was a great time but I reckon I, I'd like to do another one but maybe not loads of them <laughs> yeah it is cool I guess that match was such a, especially it being the first TNA pay-per-view um in a long time it, there was a lot of eyes on that show and obviously we were the first match the first match on the show so it did really kind of throw me into the deep end a little bit of so many people that might not have even been watching um, TNA at the time had tuned in because this was the first pay-per-view back and then I'm one of the first people they see and they might not have even ever heard of me. So it was a really nice way, I think, and a really good showcase for me to kind of show what I'm all about in like a really exciting way as opposed to just being, you know, brought on on TV, which would have been great, but it was so exciting to do it, you know, in Vegas, on live pay-per-view, like there was so many cool things about it yeah it's great I think it's really kind of exactly what I needed at this point in my career obviously like you said I was in NXT UK a bit um but I was even younger when I was there I was about 19 when I signed so it's a lot to handle at a very young age um and then I had a year or two out just doing the independence like throughout the UK and then coming over to Canada and we started doing stuff with impact at the time um it really helped kind of I think level me up as much as obviously I'd been in WWE and that was really cool I don't think I was necessarily ready for that sort of stage at my age and my experience level you know but it gave me so many tools that I think now I can bring to somewhere like TNA where I'm a bit more grown up a bit more experienced and a lot more prepared for it um so I really think it's like the perfect place for me to be right now um to kind of show the rest of the world what say here in the uk everybody else already knows um so it's nice to be able to share it and get a bit more kind of like uh international notoriety i suppose it was crazy like obviously we'd done a little bit with them with subculture um so it wasn't out of nowhere but it was very much like okay like they understand what i'm trying to put out into the world and i think that's the biggest thing i've got from it is that there's a lot of trust in someone giving you a job like that. You know, it's them going, we know that you know what you're doing and we want to help you get there. Okay, you know, I'm just going to do it now. Get it over with. All right. All right. You know, I had something I was just going to open the show with today, but Sting's retirement was so awesome. That pay-per-view was so great. I'm glad we spent 40 minutes before I had to get something off my chest. <laughs> but, you know, I watched SmackDown on Friday. Really enjoyed the show. Loved the main event, Randy Orton and Austin Theory. But, you know, I tweeted something on uh, Friday night. And I can't read the whole thing because I actually dropped an F-bomb, which I rarely do, but it was deserving this. You know, I wrote, Randy Orton saving a botched superplex in mid-move was one of the craziest effing things I have ever seen. Just putting over a spot and Randy and 360,000 views, 839 likes, 56 retweets, and 125 comments. Mm, 125 comments. 
What did people have to say about my tweet? Well, you know what they said? They were explaining working to me. You know what I don't need is a bunch of nerds on the internet telling me about how wrestling works, okay? Let me tell you how wrestling works. Austin Theory is not the one that saved this spot, okay? If you didn't see it, it's all over Twitter. And if you knew anything about anything, you would watch it and you would understand exactly what I was saying and how I was right that Randy Orton's the guy that saved this thing. What happened is Randy takes him up to do a superplex. But as he's climbing the ropes, he slips. Well, Austin Theory goes. He starts taking the superplex that wasn't delivered. Randy Orton, on the way down, realizes, my God, this guy went for the superplex. And so, literally in an instant, he goes from falling to executing a suplex, taking a perfect bump, putting Austin Theory down exactly where it was supposed to be, and it was like, I, I was absolutely blown away. Amazing. And the announcers were blown away by Randy Orton, I might add. And, uh, and now I have to hear these morons telling me that it was actually Austin Theory saving the move. Let me explain something to you guys, okay? Oh, who do you think I am? Some nerd in his mom's basement? No, I was a wrestler before I ever did this, okay? I've been doing this job... This job here since 1999, okay? Before I did this job, I was a wrestler, okay? Most of you nerds weren't even born in 1999. You're going to try and tell me how this business works? Listen, when you're going to take a bump, unless you want to die, if you're going this way, what do you got to do? Well, you know, you got to tuck your head. How do I know that? Well, because not only was I a wrestler, but I was a gymnast, and I understand rotation. You got to tuck your head, okay? So Randy Orton's standing there getting ready for his suplex. He's got Austin Theory's head. What do you think Austin Theory's doing? You think he's over where the cameraman is watching this? No. He's sitting there upside down, and he's got his head tucked, and he can't see anything. So when Randy starts to climb, and he slips, Austin Theory only knows... He's going. And so he jumps for the superplex. Now, what happened to Randy Orton? Well, he was walking up the ropes and he slipped. Have you ever been walking up a ladder and your foot slipped? What happened? Well, I don't know about the rest of you nerds on Twitter. You probably fell down and broke a bone. But if you were an athlete, like myself or Randy Orton, you would slip, your foot would end up on the ground, and you'd start climbing the ladder again. Well, that's what Randy was going to do. He slipped. It's not like he fell down. He just foot slipped. So as his foot is slipping, he realizes, well, this guy's going. Okay. If Randy didn't do anything, he would have landed on his feet. Theory would have flipped over like an idiot, landed on his back. And Randy would have looked at him and been like, well, uh, huh? And it would have been an obvious botch spot. And they would have both looked stupid. But Randy realized he was going. And so, boom, he turned into a vertical suplex. In an instant. You ever watched MMA? Well, a lot of you probably watched it, but you've never done anything resembling it, like I have, as a Black belt in jujitsu. Everybody watches the referee and they go, Oh, let me watch 95 replays and then I'll determine that this referee was incompetent. Oh, you had 95 replays to determine that? Well, guess what? The referee had a split second to make a decision. A split second. He did not have instant replay. And you know what? Randy Orton had a split second to make a decision. And in a split second, he turned a fall into a vertical suplex, and he saved the move. So don't sit here and tell me that Austin Theory is the guy that saved the move, because while he was upside down, not knowing what was going on, he decided there was movement, and so he jumped. That's not saving a move. 
And then these idiots go, oh, you said this because you hate Austin Theory. Well, first off, I didn't say one negative thing about Austin Theory. And if you're following me on Twitter, which you are because you wrote a bunch of stupid stuff on my timeline, you could have scrolled down one tweet and seen me say that Austin Theory deserved an award. Do you know what an award is? Most of you don't. You've never won one. But he deserved an award because he did that dive roll into the ring where he goes a dive roll and then jumps up into the blockbuster. He jumped up in the air, Randy Orton with the he took the greatest bump. He took that spot was so awesome. <laughs> and he took the best bump. And Kevin Owens, who's been doing this forever, not as long as me, I might add, but forever. He totally marked out. He totally marked out at ringside for that spot. And then they do a kerfuffle afterwards, which actually is a kerfuffle, but I like to change it because it sounds better, kerfuffle. And Kevin Owens hits the ring, and he booted Austin Theory, and he hit him with a stunner, and Austin Theory took the best leaping stunner bump. I put over both of these bumps, and I said he should win an award. So the simple solution here is quit following me, quit typing stupid stuff on the internet, go outside, at least walk, and get off my back. I'm done. And apparently your lawn too there. Man, how's your territory doing, pal? Anybody send any of those to you? How's my territory doing? Don't even get me started. Just let me know when you want to catch these hands, okay? So, we got more news here. Bleach Report. I'm not even going to talk about that. Yeah, I shot many... my shot. I'm done for the day. No, we got... We but got it sucks, okay? FCC, it sucks. We need to worry about them. That is a Brian and Vinny show if you want to hear about Bleacher Report. Yeah. You know, Bleacher Report sucks. It sucks. Just sucks. Huge. Huge. Actually, I don't know what the right term would be. I, I really don't. Because sometimes that one can bring you joy. There is no joy in anything that Bleacher Report ever does. Nothing. None. Now, I should mo uh, note that Paul Heyman, a lot of people have been asking, hey, WWE going to do a Hall of Fame this year? What's going on? It's March 4th, no announcements. Well, they are doing a Hall of Fame. And the first inductee will be Paul Heyman. The first member of the 2024 WWE Hall of Fame class. Do you need any others? Well, I mean, he absolutely should go in. It's Paul just Heyman funny. Billy. <laughs> Finally get rid of Stephanie and Vince. And... Well, <laughs> hey, Paul, you're going in this year. It's amazing. Well, he and Stephanie have had such a wonderful relationship over the years. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, there will be more individuals being named as well. And uh, one of the names being rumored, rumored, is Haku. So hopefully we see him going in as well for obvious reasons. And uh, and maybe some others. Should note on SmackDown, as we talked about earlier, they did announce that it is official. It is going to be The Rock and Roman Reigns versus Cody and Seth Rollins. And, you know, it was the obvious. Rock cut a... 27-hour promo to open the show to... Uh, well, to he, there were two that. promos. There was one of them that he put on social media, <laughs> which was the best promo. It was the best. 20-minute rant and from me. The one on on uh the one on SmackDown was, was not as good, but, I mean, God, this Rock, I mean, we got to get rid of this guy. Like, not <laughs> like right now. Like, let's get through Mania and make all this money and everything like that, but then you got to get rid of this guy because... Everybody else, like, The Rock is way up here, and everybody else is way down here. And I'm not just talking in WWE. I'm talking in anywhere, anywhere in this business. That's why he's number one in his, God, both of his chosen professions. He is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And it's just like, God. <laughs> and, man, that clip, he just buried Seth Rollins. And, like... As a person, Colby Lopez, I like I like Seth, but his character is a clown emoji. <laughs> and I was crying watching this promo. And Rock didn't even go all in. I mean, there was way more he could have. But uh, it was it was unbelievable. But, you know, it's no mystery. At the end of every segment, Bloodline holds up the finger 
And Rock holds up this. Yeah. And you know where this is all going. Rock is going to he's going to turn on Roman Reigns, go full babyface. We're going to get Rock and Roman down the road. And my prediction is to make all of this make sense in hindsight. Rock is going to eventually explain that when Cody stepped aside and Rock whispered something in his ear, mm-hmm. what he whispered was, let's get this guy. Yeah. And Cody walking away and giving up his spot and later taking it back to make Rock so angry that he must team with Roman to take on Cody and Seth. It was all a ruse. And it will lead to that match, which will eventually take place unless Rock, you know, totally falls apart in that tag match. Which I don't think is going to happen. I think he'll make a tag match just fine. What did Cody tell Roman? Wasn't going to just take the title. He was going to take it all from him. He's going to take everything Mm -hmm. from Roman Reigns. So, yeah, it was a good show. I liked it a lot. And, uh, And tonight we've got a Monday Night Raw show where we've got a couple of big matches, including, if I can find the whole thing right here, Becky Lynch versus Nia Jax. Y'all know how it goes. You must beat a giant on the road to WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And Drew McIntyre will be facing Jay Uso. And I don't know if he's actually put pen to paper yet, but I can't even imagine Drew McIntyre is, is leaving this company. If he has not put pen to paper yet, he's already probably a wealthy guy who is getting ready to sign a pretty lucrative deal. But if he has not signed yet, oh my God. I would be bidding on him like crazy. So I, I don't think it's it's happening. Either do I. AWNS, a new pay-per-view for April. They're moving to about nine pay-per-views a year. Oh, man, more times to order through Bleacher Report. Oh. Can't wait. God help me. It will be called uh, AEW Dynasty, April 21st, St. Louis, Missouri. Tickets oh. go on sale this Friday, March 8th. And... Uh, I presume that will be the finals of the tag team title tournament and whatever they're going to end up doing. Maybe that'll even be the Wardlow match. I mean, it's not that far away, so they can build that one up for for Dynasty. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. When I first started training, um... I think it's a lot more common here in the UK to start so young. Whenever I talk to Americans, they're always a bit shocked by it. But most (laughs) of the people that wrestle in the UK have been doing it since they were very young. Um, But yeah, I started started in a little town called Gloucester, which is where my parents lived. Um, And then I found my school in Cardiff, where I live now in Wales, um, called New Wave Wrestling. And I kind of like grew into myself there. Um, But obviously, it's a very little country, so... We have to do a lot of kind of, if I could get big here, I can move across and I can get big somewhere else. And um, it just kind of snowballed very quickly um, into obviously NXT UK and then here. Like, I feel like it's all happens really fast and I have to kind of stop myself and be grateful and take it all in sometimes. So I, um, I actually got into wrestling quite late, I guess, as a kid. I think I was only maybe 14 when I first started watching it. Um, So the turnaround between me watching it and deciding I wanted to do it was pretty small. Um, But my older brother was like obsessed with wrestling and he's 10 years older than me and he'd always kind of stay up and watch the pay-per-views. And I remember one day I was just off work, uh, off school, sorry, um, sick. And I was in the living room just sleeping and he came down and he was like, oh, can I watch the wrestling? Because obviously it's on at like 3 a.m. here in the UK. Um, So he came down and asked to watch it and I was like, yeah, sure, I don't care. And I think it was like an elimination chamber. Um, but I remember just seeing it and then being glued. And from that day, I literally stayed up with him every Monday night before school on the Tuesday and watched it with him. Um, and then I don't know, that very quickly became me just Googling wrestling school. Um, and I literally went to the first one that came up. There happened to be one about 10 minutes from my house, which was very lucky. Um, but yeah, I just kind of, It was one of those things that it's such a strange thing to go and do that I didn't really feel like I could prepare too much for it. Um, The only thing I really knew what to do was to go to the gym. 
so that's how I ended up being really strong <laughs> because I was like well wrestlers are strong so that's just what I did first um and then yeah I just kind of turned up and obviously being so young it was quite intimidating but it was very is quickly alleviated by the fact that there were so many more young people there than old people like I guess there was just an influx of people of sort of my generation that kind of realized oh we can just start we can just do this and even if you don't do shows for a few years at least you're getting your feet in there you know um so yeah it's a pretty um pretty weird place to grow up I guess to kind of become an adult around wrestling is always interesting but um it's always been very good to me and I've never had any bad times growing up for it Message real quick. This person says, loved everything with Sting last night. Only thing that would have made it better was some WCW footage in the tribute. Any idea why WWE refused to play ball? Do we know that AEW, in fact, reached out? I believe they did not reach out. I think they didn't even ask. So, if you don't ask, you don't have to hear them tell you no. Exactly. But I do know a lot of people watched uh, the AEW pay-per-view from WWE last night and were totally into the end of Sting and thought oh, it was man. great. I mean, that look, that means a lot to a lot of different people out there. And New Japan did give them a lot of footage to work through, so at least we got that era. First says, when is Tony getting the Max deal done? Seems like we need it to avoid the BR Live issues. I don't think it's an issue with Tony. I've, yeah. I've talked about this for a long time. They're not ready. HBO Max is not ready for... Let me, get, let me make this clear, because you guys, every time I say this, people say, yes, they are, but they're not. They're not ready for live streaming pay-per-views. No. I don't care what they air live now. They are not ready for live streaming pay-per-views. Has this not been proven inside Read their own my house? Read report. Hmm. My God. Yeah. Speak it slower to them. As a 27-year-old fan, I feel very excited, confident in the future of pro wrestling after seeing Takesh and Osprey. I don't know if I'd go that far because well. there ain't going to be many of those. Garcia had a very good showing, too. Darby's a great young talent. I don't know how many years he's got if he keeps taking bumps like yesterday. I remember thinking that about AJ. Although Darby's way nuttier than AJ Dude, when he was young. Yeah. But AJ's still going strong today. And my God, Stings. Well, it's another hey, story. I'm, look, I'm happy Osprey seems to have slimmed down a little bit because carrying all that weight with the style he works, I still wish he would slow it down a little bit more. Register some more, Will. Come on. Got to wrap it up. I believe we will have Filthy Tom on for subscribers at champion. Pacific 5 Eastern. A champion. Yeah. If, Just like Youngstown, Ohio. If not, I'll tweet it out. But uh, check out WrestlingObserver.com. 15,000 archived podcasts, members only stuff. It's great. And we'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.